and in him be glad. Our hymn of the morning is hymn 435. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. But my father line him for 35.
and standing in the gap, blocking Satan's fiery dots. Thank you for shielding us and protecting us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for being God and God all by yourself once again. Lord Jesus, just continue to bless us. We know there's healing in your hands. There's no sickness that's impossible for you. No pandemic, no other forms of sickness, no wars or rumors of wars, no racism, no hatred, no prejudice. There's nothing impossible for you. And we're praying that you move in a mighty way. Heal the land. Heal the land. Heal the land, Lord. Now, Father, as we go forth in this worship experience, we pray your will be done in everything. Every song that's sung, every prayer that's prayed, every word that's read or spoken, we pray that it's done according to your will. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
of a bridge, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou should have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy on us. Criteria 
We know that the age limit is beginning to fall. We don't know what the age will be in a few days. But whatever the age is, you are welcome to come to St. Paul on March the 23rd or next Sunday. We'll be able to give you more details in terms of the actual time, slots. We're looking at mornings. We're looking at afternoons. So we will know for sure next week. And for those who are 16 and old, over, who may have some type of chronic illness or sickness, you're already eligible. This will be the Johnson & Johnson single shot. So those who would like to come, just call us here at the church office, 931-388-4069. Leave your name, a phone number, and we'll be happy to follow up. Now it's time for worship. We are not invoking God's Holy Spirit because God's power and anointing has already fallen. And we welcome now Susandria and our praise team. And again, we are thankful for all of our participants, musicians, technicians, our finance and stewardship commission, and each member of the church that continues to make this possible. And we say to God, be the glory. Now our praise team will lead us in a ministry of music. Amen.
take us to stand here. From 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And our subject is simple. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Let us pray. Once again, Father God, we pause to say thank you from whom all blessings flow. Again, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity just to say thank you. Now, Father God, I'm praying for some preaching power. I pray that you use me as an instrument in your service. I pray that you speak to me, your will for your people. Speak what you will have the people to hear. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. You know, there is nothing in life worse than taking on a battle that's not yours. You just jump into something and start swinging. You don't even know how the fight even started. And you don't know how to get out of it. You don't know what to do. You're fighting a fight that's not yours. Chances are many who are watching and listening to the broadcast right now are fighting battles that are not yours. We hear all the time the phrase, this battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. With all the many battles being fought within us and around us, today I will attempt to share with you a word that I think is quite powerful, quite reverent. See, there are times when we become involved in battles once again that are not ours. Battles that hurts us. Battles that affects us in different ways. Battles that bruises and wounds us. Battles that will direct how our future turns out. But in reality, the battles that we oftentimes fight are not ours. They belong to the Lord. This is in essence what took place in Second Chronicles with King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was preparing to fight a battle that was not his. Jehoshaphat's troubles began when he joined forces with King Ahab. Ahab as in Jezebel's boy. Because of his association with Ahab, Jehoshaphat found himself the target of soldiers who had mistakenly identified him as Ahab. Now Jehoshaphat could have accepted this faith because he chose to get involved with the wrong crowd. Sometimes we get involved in fights that are not ours because we choose to get involved with the wrong crowd or support some so-called friends, even if they're in the wrong. Amen, somebody. Generally, in most friendship circles, there's a leader. And if there's a leader, there's bound to be a follower. And no matter what the leader say or do, the follower follows. In the text, however, instead of accepting the faith and following the leader, this 
time, Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord. And God miraculously saved him. Ahab died in the battle. But God saved Jehoshaphat. Since the opposing forces had mistaken Jehoshaphat for Ahab, the death sentence could have fallen on him because he chose to play the game, follow the leader. But instead of playing, follow the leader, this childhood game, Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord and he was miraculously saved. So often in life, we get in trouble because we choose to play follow the leader. And the leader isn't always Jesus, our Savior and Lord. I wonder anybody ever been in a battle that wasn't yours. And you had to cry out to the Lord. And God saved you right in the midst of the struggle. Also, when we sin, now I didn't say if we sin, because you know there's some hallelujah folk who don't think that their stuff even smells. But when we sin, and inevitably consequences will follow, we may be tempted to throw in the towel and give up. We may say, I deserved what happened because I chose to sin. We may even think it's my fault and I must accept the consequences. While we may deserve what comes to us, there is no need of, of, of not calling on God. No matter how great you may have sinned or I have sinned, there's good news. And the good news is Jesus saves. I said Jesus saves. See, Jesus came to save the weary, worn, and lost. And there's some more good news. No matter how lost we may become, Jesus will pick us up, turn us around to the utmost. Jesus saved. Yeah. Oh, that shouting news, somebody. Amen. Instead of following Ahab into battle, Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord, and God miraculously saved him. And when Jehoshaphat returned to his palace in Jerusalem, Jehu met him and said to the king, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this wrath of the Lord is upon you. There is, however, some more good news. For you have set your heart on seeking God. Jehoshaphat listened, and then he appointed judges over the land. He told them, consider carefully what you do because you're not judging man but you are judging for the Lord who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now fear now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Be impartial and honest. Be faithful for God will hold you accountable for the authority we exercise. This brings us back to the text. See, one day in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, Jehoshaphat is informed of a mighty army coming up against him. After hearing this, the people of Judah came together to seek the Lord. They didn't go to who they thought was their little leader in their little circle. But they came together to seek help from the Lord. I wonder how many ever had an enemy coming up against you. And in turn, in, in instead of, of, of setting the line 
in the sand, you went to God to seek him. Jehoshaphat stood before the people and he cried out to the Lord. He said, oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God of heaven? You rule over the nations and kingdom, power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. You, oh God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, the one you call friend. They have lived in it and built it a, a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword or judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in distress and you will hear us and save us. But now here is a great army coming to drive us out of the land you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this great army that's about to attack us. We do not know what to do, where to go, or where to turn, but our eyes are upon you. Oh, is there anybody out there listening on this Lord's day who is faced with a battle that's too big for you to handle? Are you under attack and feel powerless against whatever or whoever your attacker may be? Have you ever been out there and didn't know what to do, where to go, how to do, but you realize in the midst of your distress, all you had to do is look towards the hills from which cometh all of your help. According to verse 14 of the text, there was a man named Jehazlus among the assembly, and the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazlus, and he said in verse 15 of the text, listen, Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Don't be afraid and are discouraged because of this great army. For the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Tomorrow, go down and march against them. They will be coming up the pass of Zig. And you will find them at the end of the gorge. But take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will give you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Go out and face them on tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And the word said, Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground and all of the people fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Then after they finished praying, they stood up and they lift up holy hands and they began to praise God for the splendor of his holiness and he went out saying give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever notice y'all Jehoshaphat and the people didn't wait 
know something of the many things I've been. Sometimes, Andrea, you gotta fight up your big old something when things are good. Come on, somebody. You may have to fight it up when you are about to get that promotion. You may have to fight it up when doors are open. You may have to fight it up when things are wonderful. You may have to fight it up when all but the key to the fight is remembering what was said to Jehoshaphat and the people of Jerusalem. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And yes, when we are faced with battles, there are Certain things in life uh, makes us afraid, uh, but God sends word. Uh, don't be discouraged, uh, don't be afraid, uh, because of your big old something uh, that you are facing. For the battle is not yours, uh, it's the Lord. All you gotta do uh, is just give God praise uh, in advance, uh, and then you simply step. Take your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord. If it's a hater, the Lord will make your haters your footstool. If it's a need, the Lord will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. If it's loneliness, the Lord will never be. He's a friend until the end. And once again, let's give God the praise. Then stand firm and watch the deliverance of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord has said he will be with you. Let me go something that sends you fear. Don't worry about it. For the battle is not yours. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. Yeah, we're going to have some fears. But don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Yes, fear is real. Every one of us, one time or another, going to have to face a big old of rejection, fear of misunderstanding, fear of uncertainty, and not knowing what direction to take. There are financial fears, no working from paycheck to paycheck, paid on Monday, but broke, paid on Friday, but broke on Monday. The fear of sickness and death. God has blessed us with coronavirus vaccination. However, this COVID-19 virus is still real. Don't be like some of those smoke who are already gathering and partying. Use the brains that God has given you. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah says we can conquer fear by trusting in the Lord who brings salvation. As from said in today's text, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid of your big old something. Then you shout with me on this morning. Trust in the Lord. Do not be discouraged or afraid. For your battle is not yours. 
Amen. 